Kennedy first laid eyes on his future wife at a Georgetown dinner party in the spring of 1951. He wouldn't see her again until the spring of 1952. Like Danish journalist Inga Arvad years before, this woman fascinated him. Born Jacqueline Lee Bouvier on July 28, 1929, in Southampton, New York, her mother Janet was Irish, and her father, John Blackjack Bouvier, was of French, Scottish, and English descent. Raised Catholic like Kennedy, she also grew up in an environment of economic and societal privilege. She was talented and ambitious even as a child, taking ballet lessons, learning multiple languages, and reading often. She was a bright yet rebellious child. One of her teachers described her as very clever and full of the devil. On the surface, her life seemed idyllic, though it was anything but. Her father was an aggressive alcoholic and a notorious philanderer, often absent from her life. Blackjack's neglectful behavior led to a divorce from Janet in 1940 and affected Jackie for the rest of her life. Jackie spent her senior year of college in France, which would be a major influence on the European aesthetic often associated with her. She graduated from George Washington University in 1951, the same year she met a rising congressman from Boston. When Jackie first met Kennedy, she thought he was a man who clearly did not want to marry. But he leaned across the dinner table and asked for a date in May 1952. For Kennedy, who was interested in history, politics, and literature, he was at first taken aback by Jackie's intelligence, then entranced. Despite the clear attraction between Kennedy and Bouvier, others were wary of the relationship. Members of Kennedy's inner circle warned Jackie about his womanizing ways. You know, one of, one of the legacies of being Joe Kennedy's son was that you learned very early that men were allowed to fool around, to have as many lovers as they wanted. Jack's promiscuity, you know, is learned as a young man from watching his father. They had a sense of entitlement about what they could do that other people couldn't do, what they could get away with that other people would never think that they could get away with. As Jackie processed the news, she felt it was an inevitable masculine flaw, saying, well, that's what men do. Despite warnings, she fell for him. I mean, she knew that he had that mix of danger and charm, and I don't think she was kidding herself. She knew what she was getting into. He liked to play the field. He liked having all of these girlfriends. He liked having young women around and cared little about marriage. It was his father who actually sort of put the pressure on him, saying, if you want a national political career, you can't be this carefree bachelor. You need to get married. You need to be respectable. There is no secret that he was cheating on her constantly, and she was aware of it. She looked the other way, in part because that was how she was raised in the upper echelon of society to, to accept it. But she was devoted to him. I would say that there was love throughout. You know, I, I would say that, you know, from the beginning all the way to the end. On the evening of June 24th, 1953, the couple shared dinner at Martin's Tavern in Georgetown. That evening at Booth 3, Jack proposed to Jackie, and she said yes. This looks like a royal wedding. You know, like, if you look at the, that church and you look at those pictures, it's hard to believe that he was, you know, just a senator. 
and she was, you know, just sort of a socialite. It looks like they're like the king and queen of some country. Kennedy later sent his parents a note which read, at last I know the true meaning of rapture. Thanks mom and dad for making me worthy of her. Jackie had a certain sense of order and her own set of standards for furniture, food, fashion, and aesthetics. Kennedy, a wealthy man with a carefree style, had some adapting to do. The two had interesting intellectual conversations where Kennedy found he could speak to her as an equal, from incoming reports on Indochina to works by classic writers like Voltaire. Jackie translated books from French to English for him. Jackie was very well read. Uh, you know, she, she loved to read and she loved to write. She was a very creative person. She loved to paint. By January 1954, they had settled into their new home in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. A new chapter in the Kennedy story had begun. 